It has no brain. But a central nerve ring coordinates hundreds of tiny tube feet and a bank of eyes at the end of each leg. Pushing its stomach out through its mouth, it secretes digestive juices to liquefy its living prey. Although it sounds like an alien invader from a sci-fi horror film, the Crown of Thorns starfish has been sucking colour and life from the Great Barrier Reef as long as anyone can remember. People will argue that they're part of the natural cycle, but if they come through too frequently, it's not good news. But today, even the best control methods have no hope of keeping Crown of Thorns in check. The numbers have got out of control. So now, not only are they eating everything as they march through, they're actually competing and, and spreading wider and eventually wiping out entire coral systems as, as they go through. To tackle the onslaught, researchers are developing new inventive ways to battle the starfish into the future. Plans are afoot to launch an underwater robot army. And this, the first prototype, is showing remarkable promise. On the sidelines, a surprising array of chemical weapons are being developed from household cleaners to the smell of giant snails. When I came to see that they'd all died, I was very excited. Can we possibly tip the balance against the Crown of Thorns starfish? Green Island is a popular tourist destination on the Great Barrier Reef. It's easy to get here by boat and experience a shallow tropical dive. As a consequence, it's also one of the most heavily defended reefs from Crown of Thorns starfish, or COTS. Our priority is, at the moment, protecting tourism sites. I mean, we're talking $6.4 billion worth of industry, and we need to protect that and make sure that the operators have a viable business at the end of the day. Today, I'm joining the front line of divers on a seek and destroy mission. Down below, the coral looks fairly healthy, and that's due to the success of regular patrols like this one. The divers are using a new one-shot injection method based on bile salts. They work the same way bile works in our gut, by dissolving fats. But in the starfish, that means destruction of their cell membranes and rapid death. All it takes is one injection. It wasn't always this easy for divers to kill cots. It's been a great innovation. Prior to that, we had to inject every starfish about 26 to 32 times, depending on the size, which meant we had to drag the starfish out, physically inject every arm to actually do any good. Now, with the one-shot injection, it's just a simple 10 mil injection of bile salts into one shoulder, and that does the job completely. In the last 18 months, they've wiped out an eye-watering 400,000 Crown of Thorns starfish but it's still not enough to defend the reef from a population of millions. No, no not even close. Uh, what our concerns is now, with, our, with the resources we have, we can protect what we're already doing, which is the tourism sites offshore Port Douglas and Cairns. But the one-shot injection method has spurred innovation of a very different kind, and it may offer the divers some welcome assistance. OK, thruster check. On a boat moored nearby, Sonar. roboticists Matt and Ferris are preparing their starfish terminator for launch. Yep. Okay. So we call it Cotspot. It's a robot that can go underwater for quite long periods of time, keep an altitude above the bottom looking for crown of thorn starfish. The robot also carries bile salts in a loaded metal arm designed to shoot out and jab the starfish. It sounds fairly simple. But just think about what this means. It has to recognise and inject Crown of Thorns starfish in all kinds of conditions while navigating sometimes strong currents. It's a project that's been many years in development. It's built around a very sophisticated computer vision and machine learning system. What we've actually had to do is train it to know what Crown of Thorns starfish actually are and what's not Crown of Thorns starfish. And that's been quite a challenge. 
Ferris has fed in more than 100,000 images of crown of thorns and other marine life in different underwater conditions. Some corals are, in certain scales actually look very much like a crown of thorns and you have what we call depth dependent lighting. As you go deeper you lose a lot of red. So things actually look different as you go deeper in the water. Uh, right backwards. By printing out posters of different reef environments, the robot practised recognising and injecting 2D images. It now gets it right more than 99% of the time. But this Green Island trial is the first where Cotspot gets out into the real reef to battle live Crown of Thorns starfish. It's cruising above the coral looking for the starfish as we monitor its progress from above. When it thinks it's found one, it waits for permission to jab. And the arm launches. Yes, <laughs> right on. Nice. Cool. Yeah. That's pretty good. The, the crew is pretty happy. It was a fantastic moment to actually see it close the loop like that and uh, do an injection. Although all is progressing well, the robot does have a major drawback. It can't get into tight nooks and crannies, which is where Cots likes to hide during the day. We cannot do what some divers can do. We, but where we can really start to make a difference is at night. These Cots come out and sit on top of the coral a lot more active, and that's when we can actually come in and do a lot more. What we're hoping is we can upscale this. If we had maybe 100 spread across our reefs, um, they can be used either as a surveillance tool or even as an eradication tool to complement what the divers are currently doing right now. But if you upscale the killing of Cots, either with divers or robots, you upscale the cost. Bile salts, for instance, are pricey, subject to permits and need to be imported. So here at James Cook University, marine biologist Lisa bostrom Einerschen was thrilled to discover a new injectable that's cheap, safe and easy to get your hands on. Vinegar. And in the trial so far, it's working a treat. So something as simple as household vinegar, how does that work? Yeah, so um, they're basically just water inside, so they don't have any capacity to regulate pH. So just a tiny amount of, of vinegar um, is enough acid to just make them melt from the inside, basically. So does that happen fairly quickly? Yeah, so within uh, 24 hours they start breaking down and then the spines start hanging and then they start forming big lesions and then arms start dropping off and then eventually within less than 24 hours they've stopped moving, basically. And then within 48 hours they're completely dead. I tried a few different things and when I came to see that they'd all died, I was very excited. But even with an army of robots injecting vinegar, it's hard to imagine they'll conquer the millions out there. So how do we tackle the cause of the outbreak? For years, high nutrient runoff during floods has been blamed for unnaturally high larval survival. But high fertilisation rates are also a big problem. They have an unbelievably high reproductive output for each breeding season. A female can produce 10 million eggs. That's just one female. The last thing you want to see is loads of males and females piling on top of each other like this. So here at the Australian Institute of Marine Science, they're working on ways to prevent aggregations and they're pinning their hopes on a rather large underwater snail. So this is where we hold the giant triton snail. It's a giant marine snail, and it basically only feeds on crown of thorns starfish and a few other starfish. Is that, is that one actually eating one right now? Yes, it is. The giant triton is one of the only animals that can penetrate the crown of thorns starfish defences in the most intriguing way. The snail's long proboscis injects a chemical that effectively paralyzes the starfish. And at that point, the animal then slowly rips it apart, digests it, and that's the end of that crown of thorn starfish. But the snail can only eat one starfish a week. And there aren't very many of them left. They've been so heavily overfished that potentially you get crown of thorn starfish outbreaks because their main predator is no longer as common as it once was. The interesting thing is, the very smell of the snail makes cots run for its life. So the snail's releasing a substance that they're frightened of. So we've been now putting triton snails in 
small aquaria and collecting the water that they're held in for 24 hours. We can capture those chemicals in the water. The team have worked out how to extract the snail's mucus from the water. They know the smell is somewhere in the mucus because when the substance is added back to the tanks, the starfish go crazy. Becomes a very fast moving starfish and it tries to get out as quickly as possible. The next step is to work out exactly which chemical is causing the starfish to react. We hopefully will be able to artificially produce that substance so you could use it as a repellent bait. So a bit like a mozzy coil, you would put it out in the reef and it would make the crown of thorn starfish go away from that area. And by getting the starfish to disperse, they just might lower the high fertilisation rates. It's a daunting, complex task that's only just begun. But in the meantime, the team are also trying to understand how best to breed the snail. We could put maybe 150 triton shells on that reef and come back after three months and say, has this caused the crown of thorn starfish to vacate the area? A sentry system of giant snails may sound a little strange, but restoring predators to balance ecosystems is not a new idea. Let's go for it, because at the moment, like I said, for over half a century, we're stuck with just physically removing them one by one. And the divers couldn't agree more. Look, I'm quite excited about any idea that's going to help us, whether it's an army of cotspots or drones or whatever it is into the future. Let's do it.